how would you feel if the distance of your morning commute suddenly doubled? How about tripled? That's exactly what some residents in the Delta are facing because of ferry troubles that now date back more than a decade. We're talking about the real McCoy 2, the ferry that connects Rio Vista to Ryer Island and eventually to the Sacramento area. Without it, there's no Highway 24, but the boat has been plagued with both mechanical problems since it hit the water in early 2011. Those problems continue to this day. Is it really the case that in 2022, in this day and age, we can't even run a ferry 300 yards across the Sacramento River? KPXY's Wilson Walker is live at the dock with more on the frequent breakdowns, leaving, well, I guess, drivers fuming. Wilson. Well, as you can see behind me, the real McCoy 2 is closed again. Don't have an exact explanation for why this ferry is shut down again. It's been shut down for most of the past couple months. And this is a familiar story out here. In fact, we were out here in 2011. I was out here with Ken Bastida. We were asking Caltrans about this brand new boat. They had just put it in the water and it was already having a lot of problems. We were hearing a lot of complaints from people who have to get out to that island. Why is this brand new boat having such a hard time. Well, the two gentlemen just you just saw in that story, they have both retired. A lot of time has passed, but the story remains the same for the real McCoy 2 and the people who are stuck trying to get back and forth across this river. Oh, honey, would you bring me my phone, please? For Betty and Bob Sutherland, every trip away from home takes a lot of extra planning and hopefully a little luck. There's no red mark, close sign, so we assume that that's working. But here's the real McCoy. Suppose the Sutherlands want to make a trip to the relatively nearby city of Rio Vista. They would leave their small community of Snug Harbor for the six minute drive to the real McCoy. And if they hit the timing just right, the full trip into town might take about 15 minutes. However, oh my God, look at it, honey. It's up. They've got it up again. The real McCoy 2 is down for maintenance, so it's over to option B, the JMAC Cable Ferry on the other side of Ryer Island. This makes the trip a bit longer, maybe 30, 35 minutes, but when the JMAC is not working. Uh, let me see, 30 to their 20, it's about 55 minutes going a long way around from here. So with mechanical troubles for one ferry and what residents describe as inconsistent staffing at the other, the people who live and work here are often left wondering how to get where they're going and when they should leave, a situation that has now lasted for more than 10 years. And it just breaks all the time. The <laughs> maintenance on that thing is just astronomical. And we've even talked to our congressmen and all the... In important people in Oakland in the main office and nobody can seem to help us and it's not us. just it's not just us but it's the farmers we were on our way to meet with those farmers <laughs> Jesus what do you expect when we all ran into a closed JMAC ferry the, the lack of predictability of when these ferries are open is it's a big mystery and that means we are all going for a ride on the full-length Ryer Island commute. We'll go around Grand Island and then cross the Steamboat Slough Bridge, and then we'll turn on to Jefferson Boulevard. About 35 minutes of winding levee roads later, we have covered a trip that would have been a couple minutes on the ferry and maybe two miles of driving. Just imagine if one of us right now were to have a, a medical emergency, a, a heart attack or a car accident. Uh, it, it would take 40 minutes for somebody to get here. Mark Esperson says the unpredictability has made farming difficult as well as life in general for everyone here. And he says after more than a decade of this, many are running out of patience. We can't get people to work. I'm frustrated by the fact that the school kids don't know when their buses are showing up, what direction their buses are coming from. Everybody you talk to is frustrated about this. This is not Betty and I, this is all these people on this island, is Caltrans does not care about us, period. So you can see there are a lot of hard feelings about this out here, so what does Caltrans say? Well, first, we can give you a better idea of just how often this thing is broken down. Caltrans, according to their numbers, this ferry is out of service about 24% of the year so there you go on average every four days it's out and as for the maintenance cost they say it's about 2.7 million dollars 
on a five-year average. Now, that would mean that the maintenance costs on this boat have exceeded what they paid for the boat, which was about $4.4 million. Now, the larger question is what do you do about a piece of equipment, a really important piece of equipment, which is just underperforming out here when a lot of people need it to perform well. Now, Caltrans seem to acknowledge that this is problematic and they're trying to find a solution for it. The quote from you here, the state regularly looks at possible solutions or improvements for challenges like we are seeing with the ferries and the Delta solutions currently under investigation are possible replacement with zero emissions vehicles and potential new bridge construction options. I can tell you that would be great news for a lot of people out here because they know it is not going to be long before this boat breaks down again. And my understanding on the current breakdown is that they hope to have it back maybe in the second week of October. But 11 years of this now. Yeah, that's a lot of frustrations for the residents that live in the Delta, and it's very hard to get around that area. Quick question, how many people does this actually impact? Well, it kind of depends on the day, right? You've got mm -hmm. weekends, which are pretty busy out here, when you've got a lot of tourists who are trying to come out to get some of these destinations, get to boat launches and stuff. Actually, we've got somebody driving up right now expecting to use mm -hmm. this ferry, and they're not going to get through here today. Um, it, it's just sort of a compounding thing. Depend, you know, not a heck of a lot of people live out there, but there's certainly a lot of people who try to get out there for work. And as you heard, you know, what about emergency services? We heard complaints from the fire department back in 2011 that the, the angle of the ramp is also problematic for their vehicle. So a lot of compounding problems with this boat. And it seems like Caltrans is now looking at this as something that maybe they need to find a long-term fix for.